Gunpla is cool and all, but have you ever played with a fully painted army? Dude, that dark elf guy Liam wants costs more than a high grade. What if I told you you could get two entire armies for a reasonable price? What's up, people? Welcome back to the Millennial Model Mayhem Content Zone. And if it's your first time here, hello. In this episode of Millennial Model Mayhem, I'm switching gears from gunpla to miniatures because I've acquired quite a large pile of plastic that needs to be assembled. But Liam, what about the Model Mayhem Challenge? Not now, Kyle. Anyways, these miniatures are from a relatively new fantasy war game called... Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. I first discovered this game through listening to the great podcast Hobby Time in the Murder Basement by Heath Aldrick. You should definitely check it out if you're looking for more great hobby content. Now it's time to open up this box and jump right into Conquest, The Last Argument of Clax. Turns out my box was missing three bases for the cavalry models, but I contacted Parabellum Games and replacements are on the way. Honestly, this is kind of a relief, because I'm exhausted from building all these models. Just kidding, there's more. Time for the bonus clacks. That took 24 HOURS! These are not the easiest models to build and clean up, especially if you're used to Games Workshop products. 
but I think the sculpts are really nice and the scale is a bit larger, which I also like. And it's clear that the company Parabellum Games has put in a lot of effort developing the rules, setting, and community aspects of the game. Furthermore, the amount of models you get in this starter box is really good value, even if the sprinkles are kinda plain. I'm only going to be painting 4 Steel Legion and one of the Brute clones for this video because all I'm doing is developing the color schemes for each of my factions and an easy tabletop recipe. The first thing I always do with my minis is get some basing material on there and I'm using a basic mix of hobby sands with some white glue. Just dunk it in there, tap off the excess, and then I use a tool to scrape off the pieces of sand that got places they weren't supposed to be. When it's dry, I apply a second coat of white glue that's just watered down a bit more to help seal that sand in. Next up, we're going to prime with some black, and then apply a base coat of this red leather to the Brute's carapace. If you're following along at home, you definitely don't need an airbrush for these steps, it's just a little faster. And then the Steel Legion get a base coat of model color bronze. More like Bronze Legion, am I right? Once the airbrushing's done, we're gonna apply some color to that sand on the base, starting with Burnt Umber. Then we're gonna do a vigorous dry brushing of Khaki. And finally, a very light dry brushing of Bone White. Speaking of bases, there's a really obvious comparison to this game that I'm sure many of you are thinking about. If you watched my Lizardman video, also known as Seraphon, you'll know I'm quite fond of Warhammer Fantasy, and my secondary army was the Empire. And so far, the vibes of the Hundred Kingdoms minis in this Conquest box are definitely scratching that Empire itch while providing a modern and more efficient rule set. And the base system in Conquest looks way better than the janky movement trays that I had to use. Now on to painting the Brute. Grab the same khaki and bone white that you used on the base, and we're going to be using the same technique of dry brushing. The first pass being with khaki, aiming for good coverage on all the carapace, and the second pass with the bone white going for a more lighter dry brush to kind of highlight. Once the messy dry brushing's done, we're going to Crick's Bane base to paint the fleshy bits that are showing in between the cloth wrap. Then that very cloth wrap is going to get painted terracotta. I planned the entire color scheme of this faction around this wash that I wanted to try from Secret Weapon called Sewer Water. And after bathing the mini and the base in this stuff, it definitely lives up to his name. And I'm pretty satisfied with the colors I chose, I think they go pretty well with this dirty wash. If you're looking for easy ways to make your minis look good with not a lot of effort, may I recommend dry brushing and washing. Speaking of dry brushing, we're doing one more pass of the bone white over top of this washed armor, just for a little bit of extra pop. After that, I'm mixing a little bit of bone white with the terracotta to do a really basic highlight on the cloth wrap. Eventually, I switch to my smaller brush, mix in a bit more bone white, and then highlight only the ridgiest of edges. The same process happens on the Crick's Bane base flesh bits, but only one pass of highlights. For his weapons, I wanted to be a little spicy, so I grabbed my gold yellow to burnt orange shifter paint, and started applying some thin coats to his head decoration and those big weapons. This stuff is kind of meant to be airbrushed on, but you can get a decent result with enough thin coats. However, if I wanted it to look really good, I would mask off the area and airbrush it on. Not for a tabletop quality painting recipe though. Now it's time to switch gears to the Steel Legion, which are getting a dry brush of that bronze color mixed with a bit of P3 Radiant Platinum. After that dry brush, I'm switching to Gunmetal to fill in some of the details like the sword and chainmail, as well as add just a little bit of color separation to that bronze armor. And for the clothes under the armor, I'm grabbing my Burnt Umber because I want it to look like leather. And then I mix in just a little bit of khaki into that Burnt Umber for a quick and dirty highlight on the ridges of those clothes. Now I'm grabbing some Royal Purple for the other sections of clothes as well as some of the accents and little fancy bits because my main source of inspiration for these fancy sword boys was the very beautiful custom Wing Gundam by Jetto Hobby. Next up, I'm grabbing this P3 armor wash, and just like we did with the sewer water, we're going to cover the entire model in this stuff. 
Don't go too crazy though, we don't want it pooling up in too many areas. And also the base got sewer water, the base isn't going to get a wash of this stuff. Once that's dry, I'm grabbing some gray surface primer. Because I want these cloth wrappings around the arms to be a nice white color, and of course white is a hard color to paint so we need a gray foundation. And once that foundation's dry, we're switching to a white, giving it a nice even coat. And then I finally wanted to give the famed GW Contrast paints a try, so we're grabbing this Apothecary White for one quick and easy shade. Returning to the purple details, I'm gonna highlight them with this blue-violet color. Since this is pretty much the main accent color, we're doing two rounds of highlights, the first one with a mix of royal purple and blue-violet, and the second one being pure blue-violet. And now for the final highlight, I'm grabbing this metal medium and just holding my breath and really slowly hitting all the edges on that sword as well as some of the fancy details. And once all the models are done being painted, we just need to tidy up the bases with some more of that black, give everything a coat of matte varnish, and then we're going to add some basing materials. First, we're using some white glue to just add a couple patches of that basic static grass flock and then we're adding some Army Painter Mountain Tufts for a bit of variety. I'll admit I could have put in a bit more effort cleaning up the models, but when it comes to painting an entire army, I'd rather get it done than get burnt out meticulously cleaning every single model. I'm also a little bit on the fence as to painting the shifter paint on such a large flat surface with just a paintbrush, but at the end of the day I hope that those cool shiny effects distract from any flaws in the painting. Overall, I'm very satisfied with how good these models look for the amount of effort I put in painting them, so hopefully that means one day I'll actually finish all the minis that came in this box, because there sure are a lot. It's not like I have a backlog of other models I have to paint or anything. And with that, my journey into Conquest The Last Argument of Kings has officially begun. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed my tabletop quality painting recipes and were entertained along the way. And now for an exciting announcement. I now have a Patreon. We're starting small with only one basic tier that you can see as a virtual tip jar, but if enough of you decide to pledge your support, some interesting things could happen. As always, please annihilate those like, subscribe, and bell icons, and follow me on Instagram to stay up to date on the Model Mayhem Challenge, as well as anything else I happen to be working on. Place your bets in the comments section as to whether you think I'll actually finish on time. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time with more Model Mayhem.